Hey, welcome to another outstanding episode of Outdoors with the Morgans. I'm Norm saying hi from the sunny state of Maine. This is how we have a day. Come on up and play in the snow, Hunter. Welcome back everyone, Mike here. It is just a perfect day here in Pennsylvania. Just beautiful out, not a cloud in the sky, sun shining, nice and cool, really, really nice day. Now last night we were down here working on the uh, new woodshed and it was rain, snow, sleet, windy, cold, just kind of a nasty night. And here we are a half day later and it's just beautiful out. But anyway, before I get started with today's video, I wanna mention if you're new to our channel, I'll tell you briefly what we're about. Uh, around here we kinda enjoy uh, I guess you could say the finer things in life. We like tractors, chainsaws, cutting firewood. We have a sawmill, uh, property maintenance. We've got a couple golden retrievers. We did have a bunch of chickens, but the fox ate all the chickens. So we're not in the chicken business anymore. But basically anything outdoors. And if you're into that sort of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the uh, little bell icon beside it. And you'll get notifications when we upload. So this afternoon I have a little project that I need to work on down here at the sawmill. And by the way, I call this area down here the Renewable Resources Processing Center because this is where we split firewood, we run the mill, it's just my little work area away from the house. But anyway, what I'm going to be making are some charger plates. I've heard them called charger plates, cookies, discs, slices, all sorts of things. And it seemed like about five or ten years ago, uh, everybody with a chainsaw at one time or another was asked by somebody else to make these for a wedding, for a party, for a banquet. That's what the ones that I'm going to be making today are for, for a friend of mine. And one of the most challenging things is getting them not to split and crack when they start to dry. Now all different species of wood, you know, they all act differently, but there are a lot of like growing stresses in trees. And you know, sometimes they may be trying to expand or or, or contract when they're drying and it's it's pretty challenging trying to get them not to split on you now i did some research online and i've seen people use like beeswax linseed oil 
stain, polyurethane, uh, like epoxies, all different methods to do it. I never did find a really good solution, but I have one way that seems to work well for me. I'll show you that in a little bit, but I'm going to get started here. I'll show you what I got going on and how I secured these to the mill, and we'll cut some and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Since I have a little bit of time today, I'm going to try to answer some questions that keep coming up as well. Uh, the sawmill is a Wood Miser LX150. A lot of people ask me uh, about the blades, how many blades I've gone through. I am on my sixth blade, I believe, since I got this mill. Now, we don't saw a whole bunch. I mean, between cutting firewood, my real job, taking care of everything around here. But I've probably sawn, I don't know, 5,000 feet of lumber so far or something. You know, board feet of lumber since I've had this mill. Uh, the debarker, it definitely helps extend the life of the blade. What it does, it kind of cleans the bark off on the leading edge of the blade. And that removes any dirt or little rocks. And sometimes the bark is more abrasive most times really than the wood itself. So that's what the debarker's for. But anyway, I have four pieces of cherry on here. I'm gonna measure them up in a minute. And what I did, I, I clamped a plank down on the mill and then I put those four pieces on there. I ratchet strapped them kind of tight together and then I screwed them to that plank because I don't want them falling over or moving when I'm sawing them. It'll be a good way to break a blade. And the blade I have on right now is actually getting kind of dull. It needs, it needs sharpened. So uh, that's why I want to do these right now in case something would happen and I break a blade. It's not going to be the end of the world. Now these are around uh, 12 inches in diameter. And if you look at this one right here, this is the end of a log. It's already cracked and checking. So that's kind of what you're up against. And when you cut these into thin slices, the problem just kind of gets worse. Now I've cut a lot of these before uh, just using a chainsaw. Today we'll be using the mill. They'll make them a lot nicer. And I've never done any softwoods. I've always used hardwoods and I think all cherry. I might have used oak one time. And I'll tell you what, we had a party one time. And uh, I don't know, Hannah wanted them. I was out there cutting them. And when it was over the next day, I had like 30 of these things. And I put them on Facebook, you know, just free on one of those Facebook uh, marketplaces one. Oh my goodness, people were like fighting over them. And I told them, hey, they're probably going to crack and check and... I don't know how many messages I got. It must have been 30 of them in like a day. The first lady that came out, she took them all. I don't know how they worked out for her, but anyway, we'll fire up the mill here. Uh, and we're going to take one pass across the top here, get everything flat and flush, and then we'll start making some cookies. Now this is one of the ones that I just took off the top. I won't be using these, but you can see it's thinner at this end, thicker at this end. I'm trying to determine how thick I should make these because uh, these center pieces are going to be a little different than most that you'd seen. Like right there, I'm about an inch and three quarters. I think I want them about an inch and three quarters. I do. Yeah, I think, I'll, I think that's what I'll do, inch and three quarters.
right, I uh, went up to the house to get a bite to eat for lunch, and Melissa came down. We're going to uh, run through the rest of these pretty quick, and then we'll go up to the house, and we'll show you kind of what we're going to be making, and uh, my thoughts and opinions on how to keep these things from cracking and checking. What do you think? All right. This won't take long. Board. It's leaning. All right, we got a, uh, I don't know, 40 or so of them in the Ranger. We'll go up, maybe sand one, and uh, or a couple of them, do a little test. Okay. How's that sound? Yep. It's like a game of Frogger. There's a little, little lily pads. That's how my mind works, Mike. How your mind works, Melissa. All right, let's go see in these and uh, All right. try it out. Sounds good. That switch is a little Tricky. jacked up on there. You gotta be careful. All right, that's uh, sanding that with 60 grit sandpaper. Yeah, the next, what we'll do is uh, hit it with some like just 150. Okay. We'll try that next. This is 150 grit sandpaper. Ready, Piper? Turn your head and cough. <laughs> Alright, so Melissa has some uh, boiled linseed oil. Freshly boiled. Freshly boiled. Now, these pieces she sanded were basically, this is just a little test. And I'm going to explain what we're doing here in a little bit. I put it on there pretty good and you can just rub it in. Right. 
It's a little cold out here for that. Normally what you do, you put a bunch on there, let it sit about 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. You'll leave the excess on it, and then after about 15 minutes, you come back and uh, dry it off. But rub it in there real good. And... I remember that movie. So the first piece that Melissa just did, the first charger plate, uh, that's one that we just sawed. And that tree, that's a green tree, meaning it was alive and it was probably down for a month or two. And you could tell it's very damp. There's a lot of moisture coming out of it. The oil didn't take real well, but it's not bad. Now this piece that she's working on right now, that was one I think I was testing a chainsaw a long time ago. And, Is that uh, what these are from? Yeah, yeah, and you can see there's no bark left on that one. That was a dead tree, had been dead for a very long time. But if you notice, there's only a few little hairline cracks in that one. And uh, uh, that's the point that I'm going to get to here in okay. just a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. But that one there, you can tell the first one you did, how wet that was when you were uh, yeah. even sanding it and everything. I mean, there's water coming yeah. out of that right now. Yeah, all of them were felt real wet. Yeah, they're very, very wet. So uh, what my friends are looking for is something like this for a centerpiece, okay? And uh, that's pretty cool. It'd be great for a wedding, you know what I mean? Some wooden little axe. But to get this in there, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. Obviously, I could stick it in there, but it's definitely going to split it if I do that. So what I was thinking of is uh, just doing a little plunge cut with a circular saw to get it down in there. And then maybe just tap it in, you know? Yeah. But like I said, this one here is just kind of a test piece. We're seeing how this is all going to work out. But I guess we'd probably want it something like that, don't you think? Yeah. We'll do a little plunge cut here. And... Yeah, that's actually going to work. Okay. I need another one to tap it in now. Yeah. Mike's softer side. Doing centerpieces. Crafts. <laughs> Crafts with the crazies. Yep. Something like that. Yeah. What they're after. Nice. Anyway, what I have learned here, and I'll tell you, I'm full disclaimer, I'm not an expert on, on this stuff, but I am familiar with our woods uh, here in Pennsylvania. And I've only made these before with hardwoods. So I've cut them with a chainsaw dozens of times over the years. Some crack, some don't. And all the research that I did, it was all focusing on the finish, whether it be linseed oil, you know, what else? Polyurethane, beeswax. Uh, people even use like epoxy resins on them, trying to keep them from checking and cracking. What I have found with our woods and most of the time, all the time, I've cut them with a chainsaw. This is the first time on the mill. I have found the best ones to use are ones that have been dead and standing for a long time, that have already kind of dried out mostly. They just seem to stabilize a lot better, and you don't have that problem. Like with ones like this that are green, you know, picture that wood, that tree's growing. You have all that weight forced down on here, and you have all those growing stresses and tension, and that's all pushing on here. Well, we relieved all that pressure. So as this dries, this, this part may be trying to expand while this part's trying to contract as it dries, and they're just going to crack and break. So try to find trees, in my opinion, that are standing straight. That's number one, because uh, the ones that are leaning, the hard leaners, or if the center's like way over here, there's way more stress in that wood than something that's standing straight up and down. One that's leaning has all that weight and stress from years and years of growing, and it's gonna react badly. It does that on the sawmill, and it would do that as well, cutting these cookies out. So that's one thing, look for a straight tree. Number two, a dead one is even better. They stabilize over time, uh, like this one. Look how thin that is too. No cracks in that one at all. So if you can find something dead, that works good too. And the third thing and the biggest thing is, if you need 20 of them, cut 40 of them. Because some of them are gonna crack, some of them are gonna check, and just pick the ones that don't. When we had uh, Levi and Kate's reception, I cut a bunch for it, same thing. I mean, you could cut one piece, it would be totally fine, the next piece would be all cracked up. So cut more than what you're gonna need, and uh, what I'm gonna do with these ones now is just put these in the garage, cool, dry place, 
for about a couple three weeks something like that and then I already have an idea which ones are going to crack and check and the ones that look good we'll sand them down real good they'll have a real nice finish on it this was just kind of a temporary thing here to give you an idea what it'll look like but they should look pretty nice but uh, that's the plan cut more than what you need try to find dead ones if you can and make sure your trees are straight and tall and I wouldn't worry as much about the finish I don't think that's going to do anything uh, if you have all that growing stress and tension and moisture trying to evaporate out of this working against you but uh, tall dead and plenty tall it's dead like a, and plenty. it's like a movie it's exactly like a it is the quick and dead yeah yeah is that what mm -hmm. it's called <laughs> the quick and the dead maybe I don't know tall dead and plenty okay so if you like these videos click the like button click subscribe the little bell to give you notifications when we publish a video comment down below we'd love to hear from you and share them with your friends see you on the next one thanks just watched a great video from outdoor with the morgans like share subscribe hit the bell so you get updates this is dennis from wisconsin at the sweet ravine sugar shack making maple syrup make a day